Now current division. Again, current division. There is no current division if you have elements connected in series because the current is going to be the same. So the only time you have current division when you have elements connected in parallel. So I have like a current source like this one, we'll call it I sub S. That's the source. And it's connected. Let's do two resistors for now. R1 and R2. And if the current going in, I'm assuming here, just common sense, I'm assuming when you get to this R sub 1, R sub 2, they're going to split coming down. We'll call this I sub 1, and this is I sub 2. Okay. KCL, when you have single node, that's what we have, single node, not counting the bottom. KCL at the top. It says, if you take all the current going into that node, that's my way of writing it, should equal all the current leaving that node. Or the algebraic sum of all the currents entering a node is zero. Then you label the ones leaving as negative. What is going to that node? I sub S. What's leaving? I sub 1 plus I sub 2. Remember, when we do examples, we normally know what I sub S is. We know what R sub 1. We know what R sub 2. So I sub S is not an unknown. We usually know what that is. You'll see in the next example, so 5 amps going through 7 ohm and 3 ohm. What will happen there? So you know the values of R. You know the value of this. So this is not an unknown. But these two are unknowns. So you have one equation by two unknowns. And that's not doable. You can't solve it. One equation by two unknowns, not even Mathematica. And get a number. I shouldn't say none of us can solve it. We can solve it, but our solution will be what? As a function of the other one. Dependent solution. I don't want that. I want it. I want to get a number for that. So I need to rewrite both I sub 1 and I sub 2 in terms of maybe the voltage. Well, if they're in parallel, what do we know about the voltage drop there? The volts cross all three of them will be the same. So let's call this voltage right there cross V. So they all have the same voltage cross them. So I can use Ohm's law, which says V equals I times R. I can rewrite that as I equals what? V over R. Can I solve for I sub 1 now? What is I sub 1? I sub 1 is going to be up V over R sub 1. And what is I sub 2? V over R sub 2. So if I come back to this equation now and replace I sub 1 with V over R sub 1 and replace I sub 2 with V over R sub 2, I should be okay. I sub S, okay, that's going to be V times 1 over R1 plus 1 over R sub 2. Now, if you want to add fractions, what do you need? Common denominator, which is what? R1, R2, right? So R1, R2, sub that means to make this one look like this, you've got to multiply the top by what? R2. sub to make this one look like this, you're going to multiply the top by R sub 1. Can I solve for V? It looks to me V equals what? I sub S times R1, R2 over R1 plus R2. Because you've got to flip it. You want to solve for V, so you want that to be 1. 
You take this divided by that. Well, dividing by this is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. Can't I guess? I would. Okay. Trying to snap, snapshot it while I'm recording. Yep. No. I hope it doesn't freeze the camera. I think you're fine. It okay. Still says record. Okay. Just making sure. I thought I froze it there. I wasn't saying anything. So the voltage here is V. So now we know what V is. We just finished finding V. V equals a what? I sub S times. R1, R2, R2 over R1 plus R sub 2. Now I can get rid of that page. Go away. Can I see it? Sure. Thanks. I need it back so I can yeah, put yeah. it back there after. Now, can I find what I sub 1 is? V over R1. We know what V is, so it's 1 over R1 times. What is V? I sub S times R1, R2 over R1 plus R2. Nope. And if you look, what happens to R sub 1? Cancel out, and your answer is what? It's I sub S times R sub 2 over R sub 1 plus R sub 2. And I sub 2, it's V over R sub 2. And now the R sub 2's will cancel. And you end up with what? I sub S. Thank you. Thank you. I sub S times what? R sub 1 over R sub 1 plus R sub 2. Very similar to the other equation. The only difference, I don't know if you notice it or not, Notice if you're looking for I sub 1 here, what is on the top? R sub 2. And when you're looking for I sub 2 here, what's on the top? R sub 1. So with current division, these don't match. Voltage division, if you're looking for V1, you got R sub 1 on the top. V2, you got R sub 2 on the top. Here, if you're looking for I sub 1, you get R sub 2 on the top. And if you're looking for I sub 2, you get R sub 1 on the top. Yes? What if you got Ah, now we got a problem. Now we have a little difficulty. So what you do in that case, which we'll give you one in a minute, I'll take maybe the last two, combine them into one, find the current going to that, and break it down that way. So I'll do that. Good question, actually. So let's take an example. A couple examples in mind. One of them, we'll do just two resistors. We get 10 amps going in. We got 15 ohm resistor. And we got a 5 ohm resistor. Now, we have a saying in electricity, we said the current will follow the, the least resistive path. Meaning what? You will have more current going through the 5 amps than the 15 amps. Actually, if you think about it. Like water. Yep. If you think about it, this is three times that, right? This current will be three times that number. 
So let's see. I want to find out what is the current through this. We'll call it I sub 1. And what's the current through that? We'll call it I sub 2. In theory, if you have one current, you can just find the other current. Sure, KCL. Yeah. Absolutely. I sub 1 is going to be what? The source times R2 over R1 plus R2. So if this is I sub 1, if I define this as I sub 1, then the 15 is R sub 1, the 5 is R sub 2. Always matching. So here that will be 10 times the 5 over the sum of them. What's 5 plus 15? 20. And what do we have? 2.5 amps. I sub 2 is going to equal to I sub S times R1 over R1 plus R sub 2. 10 times 15 over 20, which is 7.5 amps. And what do you know? This number, 3 times that number. The current through this is going to be three times that number. Why? Because this resistor is three times that. When you add the two numbers, what's the sum? 10. 10. KCL, algebraic sum of all the current entering a node, should equal the algebraic sum of all the current leaving that node. So everything seems to be working beautifully. Now what happens when you get three resistors or four? Now we've got a different story. Maybe current division is not the best way to do it, but since that's the only thing we know so far, well, I shouldn't say that's the only way, because we can do KCL. KCL will be a better choice here. I, I also have an idea, I don't know if you could, you could find the, um, the uh, equivalent of the last two. The, the equivalent, yeah, was, yeah, you could do, like, if you have three, you could mm. add two of the resistors. Yep, that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Okay. Yep. Let's say we have 20 here again. Four ohm resistor. Oh, yep, six ohm, that's okay. And 10 ohm, try to make them different. I just put some different numbers. I want to find I sub 1, I sub 2, I sub 3. Now, by making these add up to 20 really didn't make a difference for me. You know, it didn't help me. Current division works when you have two resistors. Now we got three of them. Joe said, I know what to do. I think I can take these two, find an equivalent of them, which is the product over the sum. 6 times 10, 60, over the sum of them, which is what? 16. 16, 60 over 16, 60 divided by 16, 3.75. So I can rewrite that, that's 20, that's 4, and the equivalent of these two is going to be what? 3.75. That's not going to change I sub 1. But this current now you're going to find here, it's no longer I sub 2 or I sub 3. I'm going to do I sub 2, 3. Okay, I like that notation. I was about to use I sub X. I 23, Michael Jordan. <laughs> and that current, if you look at the picture above, really, it's the current, this current. That's the current going to both of these. So for this picture, that current is equivalent to that current. 
So I can find I sub 1, I 23. I 1 is going to be what? 20. I'm looking for this current. I got to use that resistor, 3.75, over the sum of them, which is what? 7.75. Nine point seven roughly. And that should be what? The other number? I twenty three. Ten point three maybe? Because you get twenty going in, but we'll do it. Twenty times four over seven point seven five. So we find the answer to I sub 1. That's the first one. But this one is not one of the ones they're looking for. 80 divided by 7.75 should be 10.3. The current in should equal the current out. This is going in. These two are leaving. Now, if you go back to this picture... The one above it, we know the current coming in now. We know that current is what? 10.3. Technically, we can draw a new one yep. without the 4 ohms. Yep. I'm just going to look at that piece right there. We know that current now is 10.3 amps. So let's do another current division. There we go. Let's cover, I don't care about this part. This, I have no interest in it, let me cover it. There we go. Let me cover this part. Just look right there. What do you know? You have a current coming in, it's gonna split. I sub 2 is going to equal the current coming in, which is what? 10.3 times what? Which resistor? 10, yep, over what? 16. So 10.3 times 10 divided by 16, 6 6.44. Four. That's one of the questions. And I sub 3 is going to be what? 10.3, 6 over 16. And I came up with 3.86. And that's my other answer. So I can do it that way. Probably the easiest way for this problem initially, not to do it this way, use KCL to the top. Get the voltage across. Then once you have the voltage, divide it by 4 to get that current. Divide it by 6 to get that current. Divide it by 10 to get that current. One equation by one unknown. Exactly 22. Is it? Yeah. Pure luck. Rounding. That's what to say, yeah, yeah. rounding. Let's take some decent problem. See if I can get something. And maybe I can find some dependent sources and independent sources and mix and match and have fun. Okay, good. I found one. <laughs> 